Star Wars 7x7 episode 2046 today. It's a Clone Wars briefing. We're on the second episode of a four episode story arc and also the second episode of season six of the Clone Wars. It's Conspiracy. Punch it. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. So, Conspiracy, Season 6, Episode 2, part of a four-part story arc that, you know, I don't think I said this in the episode yesterday, but I did write about it in the blog post that accompanied it. Just this sense of dread that builds up in you. At least, that was what my experience was like in the first episode, The Unknown, but that sense of dread builds up even more with Conspiracy. And this is a full spoiler episode, surprise, surprise, so there's your warning. <laughs> We're going to dig into it. So we pick up where we left off, where the clone trooper Tup arrives on Kamino, and they're going to examine him, potentially find a virus. At least that's the hope that there's some rational explanation for why he lost his mind and killed a Jedi general. Fives and Rex went with him to Kamino, but they send Rex back to Ringo Vinda and keep Fives under quarantine, with the theory being that he might have been exposed to the same thing that Tup was exposed to, and they have to examine him as well. That's the one thing that didn't quite sit right with me, because I don't know why they would have sent Rex back to the battlefield as well, since he was also on the same battlefield, and he spent that whole trip to Kamino with Fives and Tup, so there's a good chance that if there was actually a virus, then he would have been exposed to it too, so I don't understand why they didn't keep him for quarantine as well. I thought that was a little bit odd, but yeah, it's one of those things where did they do that because they needed Rex out of the story because they needed to focus on Fives, or was it because of some actual in-story thing where they wanted things to look a little weird or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, that one, I, you know, took me out of it for a moment. So they scan Tup and they scan Fives and there's no evidence of a virus. Shock T, the Jedi who accompanied them to Kamino, wants more work to be done, wants an atomic brain scan to be done. The Kaminoans, or Kaminoans, as Scorekeeper Declan tells me it should be said, uh, they want to just kill Tup and do a biopsy after the fact. This, you know, disagreement does not go well, so Shock T goes to the Jedi Council to complain, and Nalase, who is the uh, Kaminoan, the Kaminoan, who is doing the work, the medical work on Tup, goes to Lama Su, who's the Prime Minister of Kamino, to complain and you know, make her case. What Nalase and Lama Su do is reach out to Count Dooku and say, hey, this is going on, so now we have more conspiracy stuff in it, and of course Dooku's advice is to terminate the clone, do the biopsy, and send the inhibitor chip to him. So now we're talking about inhibitor chips, which is the mechanism by which the clones are being controlled. But we don't necessarily know the full details of that until later in the episode, when Fives is able to talk to the doctor robot that's working on both him and Tup, and basically convince the robot via just standard logic that he has to do what's best for his patient and doing what's best for the patient would not be just straight up terminating the patient, it would be doing an atomic brain scan. And so they find what appears to be a tumor in Tup's brain and yeah, that's like, oh no! But they take the tumor out and it turns out it's not a tumor, it's something else. I guess insert your Arnold Schwarzenegger voice, it's not a tumor, right? It's something else entirely and unfortunately for Tup, once it is extracted, he subsequently and pretty quickly passes away. So that then becomes an issue in of itself. Did, you know, Fives end up causing the death of Tup or was it related to whatever it was that they pulled out of him that looks, you know, horrible and rotted? Like it's, you know, a whole quandary happening here and things get even worse and that sense of dread continues to build. When Chancellor Palpatine gets involved, Shakti wants this tumor sent to the Jedi Temple for analysis but Palpatine wants it sent to the Grand Republic Medical Facility, and unfortunately Shakti gets overruled on this one, and so that is where we leave the episode. Now this thing is going into Republic hands and under the auspices of Chancellor Palpatine. This cannot be good by any stretch of the imagination. So we have Conspiracy as a medical drama, of all things. You know, man, this Clone Wars series is really 
getting fascinating. I mean, it's utterly unlike any <laughs> anything that I would have expected it to be, to be honest with you. This is not the you know, drama of warfare. It's turned into an entirely different genre of sorts, like a medical investigation kind of situation. But still, of course, deeply related to the Star Wars storyline, and in particular to one very crucial plot twist in Revenge of the Sith, obviously. So there's one other thing I want to talk about with this episode. It was just something that I realized now as I was prepping for it that also bears on Clone Wars Season 7 as well. And we'll talk about that right after the break. Stay tuned. Hey Rebel Razor, I've made some changes to the asteroid belt level at patreon.com slash SW7X7 and they are all with sponsors in mind. So if you want to get the word out about your business, your product, your service to a dedicated Star Wars audience, then please check out patreon.com slash SW7X7 and look for the asteroid belt level for details. Again, that's patreon.com slash SW7X7. Welcome back. So I know this was, you know, percolating somewhere in the back of my head, but it just came back to the fore as I was prepping for this episode. The fact that the entirety of season six of The Clone Wars was dumped as a 13 episode binge on Netflix when it was released in March of 2014. And that's different from how we're going to experience Clone Wars season seven here in 2020 and, you know, how we experienced The Mandalorian in 2019. The fact that they're going to release each episode one week at a time. And I suppose there's a very specific reason for this, a very business focused reason. Like they're probably figuring that if they do that, then it's more likely to generate more subscriber revenue for Disney Plus if they do it week by week by week than if they dump it all at once. But I guess you would think that even if you you know didn't want to go week by week and be subscribed for two months, that you could just wait till they were all out, but then you would be subjected to the FOMO thing. And yeah, I don't know. It's It's just struck me as an interesting choice and it's interesting to see how these things are evolving, these streaming services and the original content they're developing for them and how they choose to share this content with us. So um, I don't necessarily have any conclusions that I've reached about it. It was just an interesting point of difference that I was like, huh, that's interesting. But if you have more insights about it that you want to share, then by all means, drop me a comment wherever you happen to catch the episode or at home base for the show at SW7X7.com. And that's going to do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the Force be with you, wherever in the galaxy you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2020 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.